Good morning again. I uh, completely failed to advance the slides the way I was instructed to. So I'm going to see if I do better on my presentation. There we go. Uh, so again, I'm Susan LaBelle. I'm the Managing Director of the Office of Corporate Relations here on campus. We are part of the Chancellor's Office. And I want to thank Chancellor Guang for taking time out of her amazingly busy day uh, to, uh, to come here and talk to you guys. So um, on behalf of my office, as well as the campus-wide planning committee that helped to put this day together, I really want to add my welcome and thank you uh, to all of you for attending today's um, presentations and event. Uh, I'm kind of curious to know before I get started, how many of you are already have sort of some formal working relationship with the university? Um, show of hands. Oh, almost all of you, that's great. And how many of you are alums? You got your Bucky sticker? Great. How many of you are on campus for the first time? I know at least one person who is. <laughs> Okay, that's wonderful. Well, thank you all for coming. I'm, I'm, we're thrilled to have you here. I guarantee even those of you who have been here a number of times are gonna learn something new. I literally learn something new every single day at this university. It's an amazing place. So welcome back to those of you who have been here before. We're really thrilled to have you on campus today and have the opportunity to introduce you to the incredible number of ways that UW-Madison can help you connect and achieve your business goals. By the end of today, I am certain you will have learned some things about the university you don't know now, and will have started to think about opportunities that you and your company can take advantage of. I expect that, um, see, I'm not gonna remember. You're gonna see my name the whole time. Um, I expect that you will learn something from you as well. As the chancellor said, this is a networking opportunity, an opportunity for you to tell us as well how you think we should be doing things, whether you think we should be doing things differently or better. If you've got ideas, I know we have people from a couple of other universities here. I'd love to hear their ideas on how we might do things better as well. And just to let you know, uh, at, we will be sending an electronic survey after this. this. This event gets better every time we do it based on the feedback that we get on that survey, and I know everybody hates to do those surveys, but but it was incredibly helpful to us in terms of putting this um, meeting together. And so please take a few minutes and do that. Let me start with a few facts about the university. I think some of you who've been here before probably don't even know this. So we have 43,000 students on this campus. Um, and they come from 120 companies, so the chancellor mentioned 42 uh, countries being uh, represented in the incoming freshman class. When you look across our entire campus, you'll see that we have 120 countries represented in all 50 states. We're sixth in R&D spending nationally. Um, we are consistently ranked highly among public universities. And even more meaningful, I think, is according to the National Science Foundation, only Berkeley and Harvard have more doctoral programs that are in the top 10 nationally. So we're up there with some pretty rarefied air. We have all of our schools, colleges, and programs on one campus. That is fairly unique. I don't know any other major university where everything is on one campus. So that ranges all the way from our medical school, School of Public Health, all the way to our law school and our arts and the other end of campus and everything in between. We don't do dentistry and we don't do architecture, um, but other than that, we can help you. Um, our research generates a huge number of patents and startups, and the university contributes $15 billion to the economy in Wisconsin. And just for those of you who haven't spent time crunching those numbers, that's about 5% of the gross domestic product of the state. So we are a huge economic engine for this state. So as you can see from that brief overview, and you'll hear today, this is a large and complex organization. I have talked to any number of people in the time I've been here. I've been here for three and a half years. Um, I've talked to any number of people who've been on this campus for 10 or 15 years who tell me they don't know everything about this campus, but then again, they've only been here for 10 or 15 years, so how could they possibly know? It is huge, and that's where we come in, and a day like this comes in for sure. Um, I spent my career in the business world before I joined the university three and a half years ago, and as I said when I introduced the chancellor, she was very influential in my decision to come here. I think we do have a credible opportunity to build stronger relationships with the business community, and if it wasn't for her strong support and belief in those, creating those mutually beneficial relationships, I'm not so sure I would be here right now. So I absolutely appreciate her uh, support for the business community and the understanding of how important it is to work together. So when I was in my business career, and I had somebody actually from the Office of Corporate Relations who no longer works in our office, so I'm not telling tales, um, came to my office and said, what can the university do for you? And I thought, well, 
we probably could recruit some students. And so I sent them off to the HR and talent team. And I never really thought too much beyond that. And I suspect many of you in the room sort of have that first reaction as well. This is a great place to recruit students, but what else could we do? So here I am to tell you a little bit more about how we can work together. So why should my business work with UW? What's in it for me, right? Well, on the business side, you know there have been tremendous changes and pressures. They've intensified over the past few years, starting around the time of the recession. And then demographic shifts in the workforce overall, uh, and particularly in the state of Wisconsin, they're creating very new challenges for people who are recruiting talent into their organizations. And those same pressures, I think, favorably have contributed toward new attitudes toward working outside the company when it comes to new ideas and new ways of, of uh, getting ideas and innovations into companies. I think that's great. You know, at the same time, universities have been under pressures. Uh, we're experiencing pressures and challenges driven by financial, de declining financial resources. Um, on the national level, grants are much more difficult to get than they used to be. They're much more competitive. Anybody in the state of Wisconsin, and actually this is true almost across the country, knows that state legislators are not supporting universities to the same extent that they used to. Um, and so we have this decreased financial resources, increased emphasis also on the practical application of research and the need to demonstrate an impact on the economy are other pressures that we have. And some of those are imposed by granting organizations and some are imposed by the culture in the state that we're in. These trends have also increased the interest and support of universities to working outside their own walls. So it seems to me that that sets up a pretty good opportunity for us to work together. So we have this ideal environment now for mutually beneficial engagement between the businesses community and the university community. And throughout the day to day, you're gonna hear from a number of people at the university as well as from businesses who work with UW about the specifics of both why and how you can work with UW-Madison to build, again, my goal is always a mutually beneficial relationship for the two of us. To help frame the day, I want to give you a very high level preview of the ways we can work together. So beyond recruiting students again, which is an obvious way, um, I wanna talk about each of these areas that are on this slide, just to give you an idea of some of the resources that are available at UW to help you reach your goals. So we'll start with recruiting. It is the number one reason that companies come to the university. It was the number one reason on our survey ahead of time for any of you who um, answered that when you registered. It was the thing you were most interested in, but there were a few other things that were close behind. But recruiting students is obviously our, our, our number one, uh, the number one need you have here. It's obviously the, the, it's the most obvious fit with our primary goal, which is to educate students, right? The next generation. And as the chancellor, I think mentioned, UW-Madison graduates over 10,000 students a year. Um, those 10,000 students are, um, but you also have opportunities for about 3,000 internships in the course of a year. So that's a lot of uh, labor. As somebody in my office says, we launch 10,000 new products a year. I like that. Um, so we have 400,000 living alumni as well. So when these students take advantage of internship opportunities, we're always looking for more. The chancellor mentioned the fact that we really want our students to have practical work applications during the time they're on campus. Some of them are formal internships. There's other ways to do that as well. And we'll talk about some of those and you'll hear about some of those as the day goes on. We have the resources to help get our, connect our talented students with, um, with your business for sure. One, one question companies frequently ask is how they can connect with our alums. We have 400,000 living alums. They're not always, obviously, not all of them are an employable age. Um, but we do have a huge alumni network. And I'm really pleased to introduce Badger Bridge, which I think of as a LinkedIn for Badger alums. It's, a sp it's specific to Badger alums, but alums can connect with each other. They can offer mentoring and receive mentoring, and companies can post jobs on Badger Bridge. So Dave Nelson, who's the managing director of the alumni engagement programs, is here today. He's over in that corner right there by that wall. And he'll be happy to give you some more information about this relatively new resource. I think it's been up for a little bit more than a year. So now you've hired the right people. And then one of the other big challenges is how do you make sure you continue to develop and retain your, your talent once they're on board? How do you ensure that they stay with your organization? It's an important consideration and we can help with executive education, professional development courses, and programs offered in person and via distance learning. 
Um, we offer credit and non-credit programs as well as custom programs across a wide range of disciplines and we've got some folks from those programs sort of at the back of the room here as well today. Um, in fact, you heard the chancellor talk about, I think she used number 67 um, programs, which is really kind of amazing. Another need companies have is for expertise. Again, if you've, if you've kind of removed maybe some of your R&D function or you've removed some of your function or you realize you don't want to hire somebody full-time for a short-term project where you need some expertise, um, the last recession obviously led a lot of companies to cut a lot of what I consider to be core, but they weren't necessarily core to the company's uh, strategy. So if your company's interested in expanding into new geographies, you want to start looking about new ways to launch products, uh, you want new services, and you don't have that expertise in-house, companies of any size can engage faculty experts, join industry consortia, or fund research to do that. There's opportunities to work with faculty and students to help solve business problems and give students that real-world experience the Chancellor mentioned and I mentioned before. For example, we have a journalism class that once a year takes on a real company problem and actually creates integrated marketing programs for that company. So they, they produce three or four of those um, a year. They've done one for at least one company in this room today. Another example is LUCID, um, which stands for Learning, Understanding, Cognition, Intelligence, and Data Science. Um, the, it's an NSF-funded uh, graduate-level training program, and the idea is to provide graduate students from engineering, computer science, psychology, and educational psychology with cross-disciplinary experience to work on real-world problems. So for example, how are we going to invent the new tools to make sense of masses of data that companies have? and in fact, nonprofits and, and cities have. How are we gonna develop strategies for human-machine collaboration? Because at some point, we're all gonna be working potentially side by side with machines, if not now. So Caitlin Iverson is the program manager for Lucid, and she's here today, and she'd be happy to talk with you about ideas for collaboration, um, which is exciting. Another program that was actually started by some of our graduate students and postdocs who are real entrepreneurs themselves, they started a consulting business. It's a nonprofit consulting business called WeSolve. And the idea is to take their analytical skills and help apply them to business problems. Jonathan is here somewhere. There you are. Jonathan's here today, too. He doesn't have a table, but he is around if you want to talk to him about that. I've listed a few of the other kind of research centers that we have here. Um, it's kind of amazing. There are over 200 of them. Um, I just picked out a few to put on the slide. I could have probably put 200 on a slide and then said, I know you can't read that slide. but. Um, so as one of the top research universities in the United States, innovation is central to what we do. At UW, the transfer of our innovations from the university to, the in to industry is handled by the Wisconsin Alumni Research Foundation, or WARF. WARF was founded in 1925 and is one of, if not the oldest, technology transfer, university technology transfer organizations in the United States. I once heard our past managing director, not the current one, but the past managing director answer questions from people about how they could be like WARF, how they could be successful like WARF, and he said, well, you have to go back and start in 1925. Innovations at UW have resulted in world-changing benefits in agriculture, healthcare, clean energy, information technology, and other areas. You'll hear about some of those past innovations and their impact on the, uh, the world, really, later on this morning. But of course, innovation at UW continually moves forward. It's not all about the past. And it continues to create new ideas you can access through licensing or sponsored research. New companies have also been created by our faculty, our staff, and our students. And they may be an opportunity as well for you to engage with one of these new companies and leverage the opportunity and the learning from those folks. I want to make sure that people understand that this, the resources that we have at this university aren't limited to big companies. Um, we're called the Office of Corporate Relations, and I have a little trouble with that name sometime because it sounds like we only work with very big companies, and that's not really true. We're interested in engaging with businesses of all sizes. There's a variety of resources, some of them are listed up here, that are specifically available to help smaller businesses and entrepreneurs reach their goal. We do work in our office with entrepreneurs. And so I've just listed a couple of them here, um, but we absolutely are happy to work with, with anybody. There's a mentoring program called Merlin that I'm very active in, and I have been for about six or seven years, and that really is to help uh, entrepreneurs at the very earliest stage from anywhere in the community, and it's not just limited to UW-Madison, and help them grow. But we've got a number of, 
of resources listed here. So since I already busted that myth that we're only here to work with big businesses, I thought maybe I'd bust a few more for you. So the first myth I heard when I took this job was academics don't like working with businesses. They just won't do it. And I was told it's going to be like herding cats and you're going to get a whole lot of resistance. So I was braced for that, right? And I have found that the opposite is true. I, I have met researchers and faculty all across this campus who have built very successful relationships working with businesses, and they're eager to work with companies, and a lot of them are entrepreneurs themselves, so they truly understand what it means to be successful in a company. And I'm confident that we can help you find the experts you need. I can't think of a time when we've had somebody, uh, unless it was because they were on sabbatical or off doing something outside of the, uh, the city, that we couldn't find somebody who would be willing to meet with um, a company. So that's, that's a myth. Um, another, is, uh, another myth is sponsoring research project is the only way my company can benefit from the innovation on campus. So I mentioned industry consortia and research centers before. There are way too many on campus, as I said, for me to even begin to list, but they're an excellent way for companies within an industry or within a technology to pool their resources and benefit from research challenges, so you have a chance to help define what those challenges are and then benefit from that research that addresses those common industry challenges. They also allow businesses to connect and learn from each other in the industry, so they're a very powerful way that people can connect. I talked about Wharf, uh, with over 1,900 patents and 1,600 licensing agreements around the world, as well as new discoveries being added every year. I think we average about 50 new licenses a year, 50 new patents, sorry, a year. Um, there, it's a very powerful connector between the university and the business community. And continuing education, custom programs, professional development, faculty experts are also all available to help you develop new approaches to your business challenges. And remember also that connections to innovative ideas are not limited to only science and technology. They can be found everywhere at UW and you're going to hear about some of that kind of innovation, innovative research later on today. And then the last myth is it's just too complicated. I don't know where to start. So how do I start? Well, I'm sure that anybody who's on campus for the first time feels pretty much like this. In fact, I'm not even sure it's this organized. That looks like there's a way to solve it. So I'm not even sure that that's how you really feel. But that's my office, the Office of Corporate Relations. And we exist specifically to help you make the connections that at UW that can help you successfully reach your business goals. That's what we're here for. We were founded in 2003, and we were founded specifically to help provide a bridge between business and industry and the university to develop mutually beneficial partnerships. We work with all of the schools, colleges, institutes, divisions, all of our various names on campus, so we cover the entire campus, and we can help you connect with the best resources for your business. We're available to you when you don't know where to go, you don't know where to start, uh, or you've been working with one school or college and you're interested in expanding that relationship, come to us and we can help you. And I guess one of the examples I would use is perhaps you've been recruiting engineers and so you've got your engineering relationship and now you want to recruit marketing folks. And so the logical place for you to go is the business school, but I guarantee you that if you come talk to us, we're going to make really valuable connections for you within Letters and Sciences and within the College of Ag and Life Sciences to talk to people that you might not have thought of who are amazing candidates for uh, marketing. Uh, I know a company here in town just got somebody who absolutely in a million years you would never think of as a marketing resource. They are thrilled. They had her as an intern and they're hiring her full time. So we're not always in, the answers are not always in the places you think they might be. Clearly our business school is an important ally to us. I didn't mean to say that they weren't because they are, but it's not the only place to find kind of talent that you might be looking for. Last time we had one of these uh, events in, tw in 2015, I was sitting at that table right there with a number of companies and they said to me, you know what, we're less interested in searching for our future employees by degree. We're much more interested in searching for them by their talent and their interest. And they told me we needed a match.com, and that's how we had to be thinking about how we match people up. Well, we haven't gotten to a system that's match.com yet, uh, but what we do have is our office, and we kind of are the clunky um, non-digital version of um, match.com. But we're really good at it, absolutely. So we can help you find that. 
And as the chancellor said, if you call our office today, you're not going to get anybody because we're all here. But any, and you shouldn't be calling anyway because you're all here. But every day, every other day, somebody's answering our phone, we're looking at our emails, and we're always available to you. So this is how you can find us, at least one of the ways that you can find us. We have a website, and it's ocr.wisc.edu. It's extremely easy to find. And it was designed specifically to serve the business community and help you make your initial intros into where you might want to look on campus. So you can see I've put some arrows in there in terms of the different ways you can navigate. And I also call your attention to the bottom of the screen where we have innovation stories that we cycle through on an ongoing basis of interesting things happening at the university. I'm not looking for you to look at those stories and say, wow, I need that. What I'm hoping these are are intriguing enough to you to say, wow, if they could do that, maybe they can do something for me. And that's what I'm really hoping for when we have that. So that's what it was designed for. Um, you can find our, the, the Badger Bridge is highlighted there on the bottom. We do uh, cycle through in terms of new programs or new opportunities that we highlight all the time, and you can find Badger Bridge there. And of course, you can find us and our smiling faces there. So the four of us who are in this office who uh, manage the business relationships, you can find all of us there in our contact information. We're pretty easy to find. So we have a really packed agenda today, but I do want to spend a few minutes talking about it. And I want to remind you that your, um, your packets that you have on your agendas, there are some links on there, and they have speaker bios and information like that. So I know everybody's got a mobile phone with them, so if you want to look up your speaker's bios, you can do that. So all of the events that we're having today will take place in this room, which is called Varsity Hall, and in the marquee, which is the theater down the hallway here. It's just to the left as you exit. You really can't get lost between here and there, and the restrooms are halfway in between, so you have no reason to wander anywhere else than that. This campus showcase here um, has 26 different programs represented at 23 tables around the room, so everybody gets extra points for finding the ones that are doubled up, right? They're going to be here all morning uh, to meet you and answer your questions, so take advantage of that. Hopefully you had a little bit of time to start walking around and talking to people before we started, and there's time built in after between my presentation and the time we go into the Marquee Theater um, to do that as well. We built in some more time. So from uh, 10 to 10.45, we have this opportunity for the showcase and speaking to each other, too. There's absolutely value in here in networking with other companies. At 11 o'clock, we will move. I'll be back here reminding you it's time to start hurting in that general direction. But from 11 to 11.50, we have our red talks. And our red talks stand for Research, Education, and Technology. It's our sort of take on TED Talks. They're short, informative sessions designed to engage your brain and give you a very brief introduction to some of the exciting things that are happening on campus. So I'm looking forward, I'm looking forward to hearing from these campus experts. I know you're going to enjoy this session. As I mentioned the feedback before, this was one of the highest rated events that we had at the last time we held this. And so I think you'll really enjoy the Red Talks. These are all new for this year, so you'll enjoy it very much. And after the Red Talks, we're going to return back to this room give you an opportunity to visit Tables Network and get your lunch. And then during lunch, you have an opportunity to talk to everybody, and as well as I would absolutely encourage you to be sitting with other companies and talking to those folks. There will be tent cards on each of the tables, so if there's an area that you wanted to have a little more discussion with, the tables will be hosted by a representative from those areas. Doesn't mean you have to talk to them about that, but we wanted to give you a little more opportunity to interact in a less formal setting, so we'll do that. And then, as the Chancellor mentioned, we're very much looking forward to hearing from our keynote speaker, Tom Falk, who is the chairman of Kimberly Clark. He, we're honored to have him with us. He is an alum, and he's very active on campus, so that's great. So after lunch, then, we are going to move back to the marquee, and we're going to have impact talks. Those are three short sessions that are going to feature business partners who are talking about their experiences working with UW-Madison on recruiting, research, and professional development. And we are thrilled to have representatives from Covance, Bemis Company, Caterpillar, Promega, the Madison Metropolitan Sewage District, and Rexnord here today to share their stories. So I know you'll enjoy those. It's always great to hear from somebody else as to how they made it work. And immediately following those, we're going to have the opportunity to widen your view. If you've heard of the Wisconsin idea, this is sort of a named Wisconsin idea, delivering emerging knowledge. Um, and you'll hear three short addition, very short uh, talks by campus experts in diversity and inclusion, social media, and mindfulness. So those will be very, very interesting as well. 
And after our last session, as the Chancellor mentioned, the reason to really stick around, we have uh, the Wisconsin Alumni Research Foundation Wharf is sponsoring an ice cream social back in this room. Bucky will be there, and so you can get your picture taken with Bucky. Everybody knows he's the most popular guy on campus by far. So we'll have him here. And at that same time, you'll also have an opportunity to participate in some optional super sessions, we're calling them, on recruiting and research. So if you're interested in having more in-depth discussions, we will have tables set up in wherever the northwest corner is. Is it that corner over there? Okay, thanks, Nick. <laughs> um, so in the northwest corner, there'll be tables set up if you want to have more of those conversations. So I want to extend a huge thank you to my team at OCR, Kathy Collins, Nick Pascarello, Melissa Simon, who, there's Melissa in the back. I don't know where Kathy is, I've lost her. Nick is here. Um, oh, Kathy is in the back too. Um, they did a great job working with partners from all over campus to organize this event. So everybody on the organizing committee, I thank you as well for pulling this together. This has been great. It's been months and months in the making. And it's just amazing to me that they can pull this off. Um, Susan Mayer, who is our office manager, is out in the hallway. She's been manning the registration table, so I thank her for helping support the team. And Kari Schrege, who is our marketing strategist, she has just worked tirelessly on marketing and promoting this event, so that is absolutely wonderful. I want to thank the Fluno Center and the Center for Professional and Executive Development for being a sponsor of this event, and also for WARF uh, for being a sponsor and the staff at the here at Union South who got me set up to the point where I did not spill water on the laptop, so it's great. So thank you for choosing to spend your day with us today. I hope you have an enjoyable day here at this beautiful venue at Union South, and you leave here today knowing more about UW-Madison and how we can work with you, and again, please share your ideas with us, and now I'd be happy to take any questions anybody might have. We do have two microphones, so if you have a question, raise your hand, and Nick or Kathy will get to you with a microphone. How did I fall, you want to know? Well, I didn't use the stairs to get up on the, on the podium here, so little hint, use the stairs. My legs are not as long as I thought they were, apparently. Oh, come on, somebody's got a question. What do you want to know? Yes. Um, Should be on. This work? Oh, yep. perfect. Um, could you talk a little bit more about the Badger Bridge for alumni? How do people, are, how are people actually leveraging that today? How long has that been around? Could you just elaborate more on that, please? Well, I'm, Dave Nelson, who's over there, is, is the expert on this, and he can probably give you more current information. It's very easy to sign up. If you have a LinkedIn or Facebook profile, it's a one-button sign-up, but I'll let Dave uh, answer that question. Thanks, Susan. So alumni can join Badger Bridge. We have about 10,000 alumni on it. And think of it as a way uh, to identify the people you're looking to connect with. Uh, people write profiles on there, and then they search by city, by occupation, by education, and in their profiles they've listed the ways they want to mentor each other. So if we have uh, 10,000 alumni who want to connect, we can't do person-to-person -person service with them, but they can meet each other. As employers, though, you as alumni can join, put the profile on there, and say this is how you're happy to connect with our alumni community. We're also going to create a separate employer profile in a way that non-alumni can join. Uh, also, there's a jobs board uh, that you can post directly on. So right now, it's a really cool way for those of you who raised your hand as alumni to do that outreach, to raise your hand as somebody who can speak about your company. Uh, and use a jobs board, and then coming, there'll be a special sort of uh, corporate ambassador way to be on there representing your company. So I'm sitting over there on that corner, happy to talk to everybody about that system. Um, we have 10,000 alumni on it right now. Uh, we imagine it's growing to another 20,000 20, by the end of the year and expanding from there. Um, I think that's a good short overview. Thank but come you. Come grab me and I'll talk all about it.
Thanks, Dave. You know, I have to say I am thrilled about this resource. As I mentioned, we get a lot of questions from companies about how can they connect with alums. When I was in my former company and we would look for people in various areas, it was one of our frustrations. We knew if we could find a Badger, we could probably recruit them back to the state of Wisconsin, but there was no formalized way to do that. So I am thrilled with Badger Bridge, and I would ask every one of you in here who's an alum to definitely set up and put on your own personal pro profile on Badger Bridge. It's very, very powerful. You you can offer to mentor, you can offer for, to get mentoring as well, so it's not just a job posting board, but a way to really create a powerful network among alums. So I'm, I'm thrilled with Badger Bridge. I'm not an alum or I'd be on it, but anything else? You're just dying to get back to those tables. Yes? This is more of a logistical question. Sure. Um, the, talk, the impact talks and the widening your view, those types of sessions where there's several things listed, is it a panel or are those three separate presentations? Are they all happening simultaneously? They're not simultaneous. They're gonna be in the marquee, which is set up, it's an actual theater. So it's set up in a theater. Some of them actually will be happening as a panel and some of them will be one after another. So you just have to find yourself a comfy seat in the marquee and you'll be set for the whole sessions. Thanks. Great. Nothing else, I didn't leave you with any burning questions. I answered everything. I'm stunned. Well, enjoy the day and at 10.45 then, we'll start uh, rounding up the, you know, wrapping up the discussions around these tables. I'll be back to remind you that it's time to move into the Marquee Theater. And again, thank you all for being here and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks. <laughs>